Hi everyone, this is Val here. Um, I'm actually in Holmes Chapel and I've come to meet a very special lady who has become uh, a very good friend uh, through the Trini tribe and uh, we've often exchanged comments and uh, had a laugh together online. So I did promise that I would meet up with her for a coffee when it was possible. Well, you know what? Today's the day. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include Dorothy in our Friday Friends episode. So um, she's going to share with you some of her lovely jewellery which she sources through the charity shop that she works at and um, a lot of people I know have admired the pieces that Dorothy wears so let's have a chat with Dorothy and see what she's got to share with us okay then Dorothy so it's lovely to meet you at last. It's lovely um, to meet you, Val. You are as lovely in the flesh as you are oh. through the Trinity tribe. I'll so, send the check later. <laughs> so we're really interested to see some of your jewellery finds. So just talk me through some of mm. your favourite pieces there. Well, I work at the Age UK shop which yeah. is here in, in Holmes Chapel. Unfortunately, it's, it's not open at the moment, but it's the most fabulous shop and we get some lovely, lovely donations. My thing is jewellery and my boss, Karen, is very kind. She's allowed me to look after the jewellery. So when the jewellery comes in, I get to look at it, sort it, clean it, make sure it's fine and then I display it in the jewellery cabinet and in okay. the cabinet in the shop. Okay, so what have you got there? Go so uh, what I've got here are some of my favourite pieces that I've bought from the shop. Um, I'm still going through them, but these are particularly my favourite pieces. These were donated by a lovely lady who had her own jewellery store in a, an antique shop somewhere unfortunately I can't remember yeah. where this is turquoise and silver this is a glass bead but this is turquoise um, she also donated this which are that's tiny little pressed flowers in glass that's beautiful isn't it beautiful yeah. um, and we've got some more here I noticed you've got a very nice necklace on. Was that one of your finds or did no. you buy that? <clears throat> this is Lola Rose. Right. Prue Lease. We'll, we've all heard of Prue from yes. the baking yeah. thing. Yeah. She designed this for Lola Rose. Lola Rose is um, a jewellery making company which was set up by a lady who called it Lola Rose after her grandmother. Yeah. And all Lovely. of Lola Rose's jewellery is semi-precious stones. And Prue Leith, because she's a devotee yeah. of fabulous jewellery, yeah. yeah. was asked to design, and that was one of her designs. This bracelet, my sister bought me from um, a craft fair in Lewisy, Sussex, where she lives. And these are my colours. This came from the shop. This is quartz. Yeah. And so okay. these things, I'll okay. get my other rings out because I must show you the other rings. But it's, um, the trouble with working in the shop is you get tempted to buy all sorts of things. I've probably got more jewellery than Debenhams. Yeah. <laughs> my favourite things are the silver, although we do get gold, yeah. we get lovely costume jewellery. Yeah. That's costume jewelry. But these rings all came from the shop. That's Peridot, mm -hmm. Marcusite. This is a very unusual ring. This is a stone called Druzy, and it's set in a silver ring. Uh -huh. My favourite stones, as you might have gathered, are Peridot, my yeah. husband's birthstone. And this chap, 
I'm not sure if he's glass or if he's a citrine. That's another of my favorite colors. Yes. So they're from the shop and we also get some lovely costume jewelry, that's sea salt. Oh, that's it's a lovely, lovely, lovely yeah. necklace to yeah. wear. That yeah. goes with that. Yeah. And I think I'm more a bracelets girl and a ring girl than a necklace girl. I don't tend to wear necklaces very often. That's Moonstone. Again, from the same lady who donated that. Yeah. And she also donated the lovely heart. Um, and I can't think of the life of me what that's called, but that is also hematite. Oh, right, yeah. Hematite hmm. and hematite. Yeah. Oh, you've got some lovely pieces. I have. Uh, my last piece I must show you is not from my shop, but from Oxfam online. I have the most fabulous stuff. And this is a brooch, which is two brooches. It's a lady. It's Val walking Archie. Oh, right. <laughs> But it's oh, got a 90, lovely. I'm not yeah. sure how old it is, yeah. but it has the Art Deco feel about it. You know, the Art Deco yeah. um, jewellery was very like that. Dogs and ladies, yeah. flapper ladies, things like that. Well, you've got some lovely pieces, Dorothy. And, Thank you. And you look stunning. Thank you. So just quickly tell us what you've got on your eyes. Right. Um, on my eyes, I've got virtue all over and then hope on the lids and fortune which i didn't think i would like but i do lovely yeah. lovely color and magician underneath right. and bff light medium just a touch sandy just underneath there and then on the cheeks lady j and thea on the lips beautiful so that's me beautiful Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that with us. So over to you, Heather. Hello, everybody. And a big thank you to Dorothy this week for taking the time to join us and sharing some of her treasured jewellery with us. Um, I know that Val had a lovely morning with you, Dorothy, that I think started with coffee and morphed into lunch, didn't it? And we all know, Val, that probably meant a beer and an ice cream. <laughs> I know we didn't see that, but we all know the truth. Um, and Val said to be jewellery this week, and I thought... It's quite personal. Uh, it's quite a personal choice, isn't it, jewellery? So how do we, how do I talk about that? So what I've decided to do, if you'll indulge me, is to talk about three things that are not especially valuable in monetary terms, but to me are irreplaceable. Before we do that, let me do make of the day. On my eyes, I have got on chalice and dahlia. Dahlia on my lips, dahlia on my cheeks. Now dahlia is not in my match to me. But I'm making it work because I like the colour. It's a bit like the fact that I like dungarees. I shouldn't really wear them with my body shape. But I'm making them work <laughs> in my imagination. Anyway, right, let's start. First thing I'm going to show you is this double set of glass beads. They are sit at that kind of um, position on me when they're on, so they're choker length. The reason that um, I'm sentimental about these is that they belong to my mother-in-law who passed away in November. She's 94. 93, 94, um, but for the last 10 years she'd spent her time in a nursing home and latterly had suffered with uh, dementia. But uh, she was in a nursing home local to us and uh, my husband and I used to go and see her every Saturday and take her out when she was in better health or at least just sit with her and have a cup of coffee in, in the last few weeks of her life. Um, and when I first met her, she was fit as a fiddle, riding a bike. Her name was Constance, so we called her Connie. And I've got some lovely, lovely memories of days out with her. Um, and when we were sorting through bits and pieces, my sister-in-law felt quite strongly that I should have a piece of her jewellery to remember her by. And she she wanted me to have something that was, you know, gold, sort of a ring. Or a, and I didn't, I didn't feel that was right. I thought that should all go to um, Eleanor, who was Constance's daughter. Um, but I said, would it be all right for me to have these beads? Because I can remember Connie wearing them. And... Um, 
it would just be a nice a nice little tribute and she said yes of course I brought them home and I washed them and I think I might have said this on Instagram before but my mother-in-law died quite close where my husband and I were due to go away for my to celebrate my 50th birthday and it had been a holiday that we planned and, and um, you know spent a long time saving up for and we were not really sure whether we were going to make that holiday but um, we said to ourselves if we could get all the arrangements made uh, and do everything in her will then we would go if we could uh, in the knowledge that she would not she would have been livid if she thought <laughs> we'd missed a holiday because of her and she used to love looking at um, the holiday photo so as it happened everything the stars aligned we managed to get all of the arrangements made we couldn't have the funeral until uh, nearly four weeks hence actually because of the time of the year and that we wanted church and cremation so we went away feeling calm that we had fulfilled her wishes and I took these beads with me and I wore them every night on holiday and I thought that's a little bit of Connie that's come away with us so that's why I'm sentimental about those. Second thing I'm going to tell you about is this necklace here which is on long gold I've got the gold chain already but it's this thing here that I'm sentimental about and I've got my hand there you might be able to see it's engraved all the way around and when I saw this in the jewel, is it second, second hand? I thought, what is that? I've never seen anything like that. You know, what, what is it? We went in and inquired about it. And it's, I can't remember now if it's Edwardian or Victorian, but it's, it extends like that look. I don't know if that will give it away. You'll now know what that is. But it's a lady's propelling pencil that they would wear on their belt. And uh, I can't, <laughs> there's no lead size to fit that now, unfortunately. But I've never seen anything like it um, before or since. And I said to my husband, you know, that is that is beautiful. I was sort of captivated by it. But um, I didn't, I didn't, I just I was just curious. And uh, it was the year that my husband got his first patent award. My husband's a designer. And the, the, the design that he came up with got worldwide patent rights. So um, he got a little bit of a bonus through work for that. And he wanted to treat me to something. So unbeknownst to me... He went back to the jewellers, bought this, and I had it for uh, my birthday. Um, so that's why it's important to me, because it reminds me of something that my husband did that I, I am tremendously proud of, um, but also that he wanted to share part of that success with me, because that is just the sort of man he is. Um, so I've worn this many, many times. I won't put it on over my specs, but it sits at about this height. And uh, I used to wear it um, when I was out and about with work quite a lot. And a member of staff once said to me, is it a whistle? Are you about to referee? Which was quite, was quite funny and that stuck with me. That's why I'm sentimental about that. The last thing I'm going to show you is this. I think this is silver. Uh, I bought it from Spain and it's a long... Oh, look, fits in my pocket. It's in my pocket, but actually it's, look, I'll show you, it's about that height on me, dragonfly. And I bought this in Valencia, and you'll know this story, but my, my dad was disembarked from a cruise that my mum and we were on to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary um, with some serious medical complications. He had to have surgery that night, um, and uh, I won't go into the, all of the details of that, but it was to really touch and go about whether my dad would survive. He was in intensive care and we spent six weeks in Spain before he was stable enough to fly home and then spent another nine months in hospital recovering. But if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that my, how has my dad recovered? I mean, nothing phases him now, but he is left with a little bit of, uh, I think, impaired mobility would be the right thing to say. Um, but... Uh, my, the hotel that my mum and I were staying in while my, my dad was in hospital was next to a shop called El Court Anglais, a bit like a John Lewis, but it had got a really nice food hall in the basement. And, uh, you know, my mum and I, obviously, we were, we were trying to be sensible about what we spent while we were there because we weren't quite sure about the position of travel insurance, who, who in the end turned out to be absolutely fabulous. That's, but that's a completely different story. Um and so we were buying, you know, our, our, most of our food from that food hall. But every time I walked into the shop, I went past the stand that was selling this. And I kept thinking to myself, that is lovely, but it really isn't the sort of thing I ought to be buying in these circumstances. So I promised myself that if my dad um, recovered, that I would buy it. And so when we knew he was going to be flown home, I bought it. It is now a lucky charm for me. And every time I travel, I wear it. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.